Hi, this is Dr. Minde. So just to wind up on the mechanisms of breathing, we're discussing what happens during quiet expiration. So remember, we said with quiet respiration, you decrease the dimensions of the chest. So you decrease the anterior posterior diameter by descending the sternum and the sternum moving inwards. Then you reduce the vertical diameter. That means um, the diaphragm now really becomes dome-shaped upwards and reduces the diameter then you reduce the transverse diameter the ribs descend and go back to the bucket a resting bucket handle so when you reduce those dimensions of the chest you increase the pressure within the thoracic cavity forcing the air out because the pressure of the air inside is more than the atmospheric pressure also in quiet respiration, there's elastic recoil of lungs that will force the air out. And we've talked of the relaxation of the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles. So when the diaphragm relaxes, it's dome-shaped, up, facing upwards, reducing the vertical diameter, while the external intercostal muscles, when they relax, the ribs now get back to a downward uh, position and the sternum also moves downwards and inwards so the diaphragm moves upwards and there is an ink the tone of muscles to the anterior abdominal wall when you increase the tone of muscles to the anterior abdominal wall they contract and that forces the diaphragm to move upwards because of increased intra-abdominal pressure that is now more than the thoracic pressure so that's what happens during quiet expiration so um if you're to look at the diagram that explains that quiet expiration you'll see the diaphragm now curves upwards the abdominal wall muscles contract so the pressure in the abdomen becomes more than the thoracic cavity so it pushes the diaphragm upwards then the intercostal muscles will relax and when they relax the ribs are now pulled back downwards and inwards so that causes um, the quiet expiration but what happens during forced expiration forced expiration is an active process so you it's caused by forcibly contracting muscles of the anterior abdominal wall so when you forcibly contract muscles of anterior abdominal wall it leads to forced expiration so the quadratus lamborum also contracts and pulls down the 12th ribs quadratus lamborum with the muscle of the posterior abdominal wall it contracts and pulls down the 12th rib leading to forced expiration Furthermore, we also have the intercostal muscles that pulls the rib downwards. So intercostal muscles pull the ribs together and depress them to the lower 12th rib. Serratus posterior inferior and the latissimus dorsi also come in. So these are the muscles that are involved in forced expiration. So you have anterior abdominal muscles contracting, quadratus lamborum contracting and pulls down the 12th rib. Intercostal muscles again pull the ribs together and depress them. Then serratus posterior inferior and latissimus dorsi are also involved in forced expiration. So it's an active process. So you depress the ribs and bring them close to each other. Okay. And um, quadratus lamborum is also acting on the on the on the ribs, and that causes forced um, expiration. So during inspiration, scalenus, anterior, and medius muscles are used to fix the first rib. Okay, then you the ribs will move upwards and outwards. That will cause inspiration. But during forced expiration, quadratus lamborum now depresses the twelfth rib. So what are the clinical correlates? We have dyspnea. What is dyspnea? Dyspnea is breathlessness. When you have difficulty in breathing, we call that dyspnea. So Patients who have dyspnea, they're usually comfortable when they're sitting up or leaning and leaning forward. So they sit up and lean forward and they will fix their arms. So why? In this sitting position, in this sitting posture, the position of the diaphragm is lowest. And that way it allows some ventilation, maximum ventilation. When in a sitting posture, the diaphragm is at the lowest position compared to 
when you are lying supine so you allow maximum ventilation in a seated position that's why patients who are breathless will prefer to sit up and lean forward and fix the arms so why do they fix the arms they fix the arms because fixing the arm fixes the scapula so when you fix the scapula the serratus anterior and pectoralis minor act on the ribs to a good advantage so that sort of fixing the scapula helps them to use the accessory muscles of respiration so serratus anterior and pectoralis minor are used by the ribs to a good advantage so the height of the diaphragm in the thorax is usually variable depending on the position of the body and the tone of abdominal muscles so on your lying supine the height of the diaphragm is highest okay it's highest when you're lying supine then when you stand it's still high when you sit the height of the diaphragm is lowest so sitting um posture the position of the diaphragm is at the lowest then when you stand the um, diaphragm ascends slightly and when you lie supine the diaphragm is even at its highest position so that is why in dyspnea and breathlessness patients prefer to sit down because at that level the diaphragm is at the lowest therefore there is maximum ventilation with less effort so from the anatomy you have learned through the, the pleura and the mechanisms of breathing you need to be able to evaluate a patient with breathing problem be able to explain pleural effusion and how it affects the breath sound and the congenital chest malformations and how they will affect the um, mechanism of breathing thank you